Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for stopping by. My name's LT and today we're going to be working on parts of the fuel system of Ugly Truck, the turbocharged and 8.1 swapped Silverado 1500. The main objective is to install some bigger injectors because I think the stock ones are like 24 or 28 pounds and they're just not going to support any horsepower over stock. So I got some big ones, they're in the house and they're ready to get thrown on. But before I get to any of that, I've got to make it a little bit more comfortable in this shop because it's winter time in Utah. Now, I lived in three separate states where it gets really cold, Idaho, Utah, and Maine, and I actually really enjoy the winter time. I love driving in snow, I love outdoor snow activities, but it's got to be somewhat comfortable in the shop space that you're working in. And right here, this space is not heated, it's not insulated that well, and it actually is on the shadowy side of the house, so the sun doesn't even really warm up the space that much at all. I've got a small laser thermometer over here, and I'll shoot the side of the truck to kind of show you. Right now, it is 42 degrees. That's kind of the air and surface temperature in the shop here. And that's just not comfortable. I mean, my hands, they just kind of, they get stiff. They don't work that good. So I need to warm it up. Now, until recently, I was using this guy right here, which doesn't really do anything at all. It's just a simple 120 volt electric space heater. And you know, you can stand next to it and warm up your hands. But in terms of warming up the overall space, it doesn't do anything. So I went online, I went to Northern Tool, and their most popular heater is this guy right here. It's a 5,000 watt electric space heater, and it does require 220 volts of power and a 20 amp circuit, which luckily I do have over here by my welder because obviously you could have 220 volts to run your welder as well. I think the plan is to install it up there on the beam. That's a good kind of central space. This is a bit of a weird shape. It's kind of an L shaped, but I think that's a good enough central location and it is close to my plug. So we'll get the heater installed on the ceiling. I probably got to go to the store to get some cord to plug it in. We'll get the space warmed up and then we'll move on to the fun stuff. The installation and the wiring were pretty straightforward. Everything was more or less self-explanatory, but if you are gonna attempt this on your own, just make sure you consult a qualified electrician to make sure you install it to code depending on wherever you live. Um, so far, no complaints. It seems to be running pretty smoothly. I had it on there for about 15 or 20 minutes now. Now it is kind of small up there, which is nice because it doesn't take up a lot of room. 
and it seems to be putting out a fair amount of heat. The only thing I wonder is if I should have got the little bit larger one. Uh, this guy right here puts out 3000 watts on the low setting and 5000 watts on the high setting, but for only like 80 bucks more, uh, this one was $99, but for about 80 bucks more, they had one that would do, I think five and 7,000 watts. But I don't know, it's a pretty small space in here, so we'll see how this does. All I really want is something just to raise it just a couple of degrees so it's a little bit more comfortable to work. And if I come out in the morning, you know, an hour or two before I'm about to start and let it run, I think it'll do just that. Now there's only one complaint that I've noticed so far. It's only been running maybe 15, 20 minutes or so. And that's with the fan. It seems to be kind of badly out of balance, but what I did to cure it temporarily is I took a zip tie. You can kind of see right there, one of those really big heavy duty zip ties. And I just went between the cage and the fan motor just to kind of dampen a little bit of the vibration. And that did help quite a bit. Now I might swap it out for a different one. They've got like a year warranty on it. But for now, it's working, it's warming up the space, and that means we can get back to work on the truck. It was kind of a pain in the butt to get the rail assembly out of the truck, especially since on the driver's side, three of the injectors didn't want to leave the manifold. So what I ended up having to do is pop off the little clip that actually holds the injector into the rail, it was right there. And then one at a time, I was able to just grab the injectors that were remaining in the manifold, just kind of wiggle them around and around and around, and then they would eventually loosen up because there's a lot of dirt and grime that collects down there around the O-ring on the base. But after a little bit of persistence, I was able to get the whole thing out without damaging or breaking anything. Now those injectors are still good. They're 29 pounds per hour and who knows what I'll ever put them in, if anything. Uh, but once I did get them out, the next challenge was to get the hole cleaned out down in the manifold. Basically what I did is I grabbed a bunch of Q-tips just from the bathroom, standard old cotton swabs and a cap full of acetone. And I just dipped the Q-tip in the acetone and then just went down there in the little hole, just kind of wiggled it around and around. And when you're done, Hopefully you get all the dirt and grease and grime out and it's going to look something like that in the hole. It'll look a lot cleaner. So that way when you go to put the new injectors down in the hole, they don't tear or they don't get damaged. Speaking of injectors, what's going to be going back in are a set of FIC or Fuel Injector Clinic 1000 cc per minute injectors. Now these are a little bit on the pricey side. There's no way around that, but you really don't want to cheap out on injectors because if you have a, you know, a low quality set, Sometimes they're not flow matched properly. Sometimes they just fail. And if you have an injector fail or flow a lot less than its cousins or its neighbors, you know, in the engine, you have the potential to lean out your engine and cause a lot of damage. And that's kind of not something I want to risk, especially when we already have a weaker than usual short block. We will build it in the future. I've kind of mentioned that a bunch. But anyway, injectors, you just want something that's going to be a good quality so you don't risk your engine because honestly, that's what's at stake. And the FICs, they do come with a complete set of data available. This is just a spreadsheet you download, but it'll get you everything you need to plug and play in your stock computer. And a thousand cc injector, depending on how much fuel pressure you have, it'll support somewhere around a thousand horsepower at the rear wheels. And that's really the goal that we're going for. That's that 90% duty cycle on gasoline. Now I have thought about doing flex fuel, you know, E85 or ethanol, but E85 does require about 30% more fuel than gasoline to make the equivalent amount of horsepower. So if I want to run E85, I'm going to be maxing out somewhere around 800 horsepower, 850 or so at the wheels. Now, I do know you can do a flex fuel operating system on the 0411 PCM that's in this truck, and I might mess around with that. I'm not sure, but for now, at least we've got a good injector. It'll support for the most part my goals on gasoline. So let's get them in the rail and get the rail back in the truck.
I start it up and let it run just for about 15 seconds, basically just to do a leak check to make sure there's no fuel spraying out the top of the injectors and that there's no vacuum leaks on the bottom and making sure that the wiring all works. And we pass with flying colors. So we're one major step closer to getting this 8.1 driving down the road under boost. But there's one thing I wanted to point out if you're gonna be installing larger injectors in your car or truck. You don't really wanna drive it at all or even let it run for that long for that matter until you get the computer tuned for the larger injectors. Now, in my case, I'm going from a 30 pound injector from 29 to a 95 pound injector approximately. So we're spraying about three times more fuel than it requires to run. So needless to say, it's gonna be really rich and you do have the possibility of washing out the rings if you drive it. So basically don't. Now it is really a simple operation if all you're gonna be doing is installing larger injectors when it comes to the tune because FIC provides all the data in a spreadsheet. So it's basically copy and paste, but I'll show you guys that in a future upload along with all the other tuning changes that we're gonna to have to make because we're converting the speed density, I'll have to enable the electric fans, make the injector changes and probably a few other odds and ends. So stay tuned for that. As far as the little electric uh, heater goes, I'm pretty happy. This is actually the second day for this video, or the second day that it took to make it. I turned the furnace on this morning and it heated the space up pretty comfortably, so I'm happy with how it turned out. It's nice and quiet, it doesn't make a lot of noise. Um, super simple and easy to use. So I'll keep you guys updated on how it works long term, but so far I'm happy. I gotta say thank you guys for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys on the next upload.